A story in three parts for you this time, guys. We've got some good news, some bad news, and some just regular news. Good news! We have a Mercedes SLK windscreen to fit on the car. We can start seeing what it looks like, build a frame, all is good. The bad news, however... It was in the boot of my car when my car was written off. So unfortunately, this has also written off our plans for this episode. So we thought that'd give us a bit of a problem, but we have figured out something we can do this month. Instead of working on more of the cosmetics and building up some of the body line of the car, we're going to try and get the engine working, which means stripping the engine loom out of the donor car. We might not get it working, but at least we'll know what we need to get it working. Broken though it may be, we might as well get some use out of it before we throw it away. So, we put these two clamps on just to give us a, a, an anchor point to rest it on, and we can put this in and see where it lines up with the car. Obviously this is a little bit vague because we don't really know what's going to happen here, but at least we can get a reasonable idea of how it's going to look. From this position I can still see the tops of the tyres, which is nice, we've got really good visibility across the front of the car. Um, we might end up moving it down, back a little bit, shuffling it around, but this is as best as we can do as a ballpark, and it's a pretty good representation of where we might end up. The wiring loom was the last thing left in the donut, and we've been avoiding pulling it out for as long as we could. Now it was finally getting scrapped, the time came to pull the whole thing out and untangle what we actually needed. What I've got in front of me is one of our two wiring looms. We've got the big uh, main car loom that does like lights and comfort stuff. But here we've got some of the engine looms. So this is things like our uh, fuel injectors, coil on plug triggers, and a couple of little sensor connectors and gubbins like that for the ECU. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some of this hooked up onto the engine and see what sort of sensors we need to dig out, see what connects we need to find and see what we need to get this vaguely near a point where we might be able to turn the key and start it if obviously not have it running as a car. We've got the engine loom in, mostly all plumbed up to everything it plugs onto, but we do have a couple of open questions. We've got a few two and three pin connectors kind of scattered around the place that we need to plug into stuff. Thing is, most of the stuff that they plug into is on things like boost pipes, uh, on the, you know, for all the boost control off the turbo, there's a couple of coolant sensors and things like that. So what we're going to start doing now is rebuild the turbo and manifold and get that all on, some of the boost pipes and all the coolant things that we need to plug onto to get the rest of this plumbed in. So now we've got the manifold on, we can mount the turbo. Unfortunately, we now need to dig out a couple of bolts that fit in here from our massive pile of bolts that we put together 18 months ago when we stripped the car. And I hate myself because I shouldn't have done that, I should have paid a lot more attention, and I didn't. And now I'm paying for it because we have to sift through this massive pile of bolts to find anything. But we found the majority of them. We can now put this on. There's a couple of oil feed lines we need to get around, so we can put this under and fit this on here, bolt it in through here. We have actually snapped a stud, but this turbo we think is duff and it was driving pretty badly. So this is going to get replaced at some point, but we need it right now, but not later. So we'll get on with that, throw this on and all will be well. <laughs> laid out completely randomly in front of me are all the pipes that we took off of this engine when we took it apart a year and a half ago. The plan now is we're going to put back on anything that has a sensor or anything that plugs into anything else that has a sensor. So we've got to figure out how all of this goes back together, throw it all on and see what we can get plugged in. So with the engine loom sorted, there's a few more pieces that we need off this loom. We need the radiator fan connectors, we need some water temperature sensors, horn, all sorts of stuff that lives in the engine bay. Unfortunately, they all terminate over here, because we're a right-hand drive car, not a left-hand drive car. But there's a lot in here that we don't need. We don't need most of the overhead wiring. We don't need all of this, which services the left side of the car, or this one that services the right side of the car, because that's the doors. We don't have doors, so we don't have windows. We don't have an electric mirror. So much of this we don't need, but we're going to have to unpick it all to get rid of a huge amount of services. And the sooner we can do that, the better. And seven hours later, we've removed a lot from the middle of the loom. This end of the loom is still a mess. This end of the loom is still pretty much as it was. But we've got rid of a huge amount of pipe work from the central locking and the screen wash and a couple of pounds worth of cables here, connectors, loads of loom tape and more plastic. 
and it's looking better. There's still some stuff we want to fix, like some of these connectors that Audi use on their OEM loom don't look that great and we've pulled an awful lot of the bits off that they connect onto so they can be redone and probably done in a lot more effective manner. Now we're getting to that time in the project where Pedalbox needs to buy a pedal box. Unfortunately, the footwell of this thing is designed for tiny people with tiny feet and Aid's big old clown shoes don't really fit well in the space that we've got. So we're going to cut out a lot of this and make ourselves some more room. So the first piece we're removing today is this horizontal section. We were planning to keep this for part of our dashboard and tunnel and shifter assembly and everything, but we've kind of changed our minds on how a lot of that's working. So that's going to go. Next up, we're getting rid of what's left of our front engine design of the original chassis. So we're cutting out what's left of the original transmission tunnel. So we're losing these uprights, the gearbox supports here in the middle, and these part width horizontal members. And we're going to replace this with a full width one across the whole size of the car. But to give us a bit more room to get all that done, we're just going to pop the steering column off real quick and then we'll get started. So with these all cleaned up, we can put in our new cross member. Now we've cut this and chamfered it so that it's going to fit up nicely against the inside of the chassis. And we've used this ratchet strap to pull the bottom of the chassis into the same as the top. Because, as with everything else on this chassis, when we cut this bit out, it all kind of pinged sideways ever so slightly. So to bring it back into true with the top and keep our nice slab-sided shape, we've just put this ratchet strap on and pulled it in to get it right. So we can drop this in on the bottom here onto these magnets, line it up in line with these vertical pieces because these are staying and in line with this at the top, weld it in and our new heel rest for our pedal box to go here is all sorted. So it's another day, the sun's out, we're in shorts and we've been making these cross braces. These are going to come down from this corner instead of straight back off this new cross piece and they're going to lead back into the floor where we're going to have some sort of tunnel here um, and it'll transfer any forces through and actually stiffen the chassis laterally a little bit because everything else is straight back so hopefully this will add a bit more strength. We've cleaned these up, we're just going to get these welded into each side and then we'll get on joining these across here and building something in the front to take our pedal box, fuel tank and a few other bits and pieces. Now we've got these braces in, these half inch front seat rail supports are looking a little bit weedy and they don't really fit between this box and this box and they look a little bit soft. So we're going to slice these out, replace them with a couple of pieces of inch box instead and make it all nice and strong. Now we've got those in, we can throw the seats back in, and that's the floor basically done. Actually, Aid, you're wrong. The next thing we're going to do is not put the seats in, it's going to be weld up the bottoms of all our new pieces of metal we've put in. So we've hoisted the car up, let's get going. So once I finished the welding, we've spent about an hour or so under here with a wire wheel on the angle grinder, which is terrifying, but produces really good results. The bottom of the car is really, really clean now, and we've also cleaned off a lot of the old welds that had been holding the floor pan on, because we still had a lot of little bits of seam weld left, so they're all gone. So now, last thing we do before we put this away for the night, we're going to throw a layer of primer on the whole underside and go have a barbecue. So, after all that work, we can now finally put the seats back in and move this around like a car. Except there is one small problem. We're not quite as finished as Adrian thought we were. We've still got to paint up our rear bulkhead here, and to paint it, we're going to need the engine out of the way so we can get to the back of it. So, we're going to pull the engine. While it's out, we're going to take advantage of that, and we're going to pull off some of the accessories we don't need, like the power steering pump and the air conditioning compressor. So where I'm sitting right here is the front of the engine. Normally we'd have a radiator and fans and everything here, but obviously not in our case. Now, down the front of the engine here, we've got a casting that holds a whole ton of ancillaries. So we've got the alternator, which is good. We kind of want to keep that. We've got an air conditioning compressor, which we are not going to be able to use because we're not going to have an interior to cool. So that's going. And down at the very bottom, we've got a power steering pump. Now, we are using the original rack, which is a power steering rack, but it's at the front of the car, and the amount of high-pressure hose that we'd need to power it would be horribly expensive. 
and also there's so little weight in the front of this thing that we just don't need the assistance of power steering. So that's going to go as well. So we're going to have to shorten the belt up, or rather get a shorter belt that runs just around the main pulley here, the tensioner and the alternator, and straight back down. So all in all, we've been pretty productive here this month. It's not gone quite the way we expected to. We were hoping to get a windscreen kind of offered up and see how that might influence our styling and get some sort of sketches and stuff done, but obviously Adrian's crashed and a few other circumstances got in the way of that. So instead, what you've seen is us doing a whole bunch of checklist stuff. We've wanted to do some of our wiring for a long time, get some of the ECU loom ready to plumb in, thin the engine down a bit ready to, you know, so it's a bit more suitable for our use, and also tidy up the body. Now, I was worried that by the end of this episode we wouldn't really have a big payoff, you know, because we've just been doing little bits and pieces, some wiring, some polishing and everything like that. But actually, this looks really good now. Just look at it. I'm really, really chuffed with how well we've done this month, even though we've not had the parts we've been expecting. But hopefully next month, we're going to get some parts we've been waiting on for a while, and we'll get some even more cool stuff done for you guys.